Well, welcome back to our afternoon big group sitting. <clears throat> yeah, I thought um, a good use of our hour today might be to do some forgiveness practice. You know, we're sort of arriving at the end of the year. It's a full moon night and uh, yeah, just to sort of investigate and feel into any of the weights that we're carrying around in our heart. and. Yeah, just as a act of kindness towards ourselves. Um, remember uh, this Neem Karoli Baba, his beautiful statement, which probably many of us have heard, never throw anyone out of your heart. And um, in this punishing and difficult year, I'm sure there's many times we've thrown many people out of our heart. And, um, but I think there's wisdom and beauty in this statement, you know, recognizing what's good for ourselves and what's good for others. Um, yeah, and not a, not a question of who is or isn't deser deserving of my forgiveness, but, you know, what are we carrying? What are we holding that's, really burning us. And I think this practice also gives us a chance to sort of um, highlight or illuminate beliefs we might have that we don't know are operating, you know, beliefs like um, vengefulness makes me strong or softly punishing you will nourish me or make me strong or feel better. And I think, you know, it's like looking at this idea of, of boundaries that are necessary. You know, we need to navigate this world, navigate relationships, learn how to protect ourselves, but it's different than hatred. Um, so just sort of allowing ourselves to enter into this really deep practice of the heart. And I think, I think even more important than, you know, forgiving others, I feel there's just this place for forgiving ourselves, for making space for ourselves. Um, it's a beautiful talk. Um, a Krista Tippett interview on being with Sharon Salzberg. And Sharon just said something that just sort of <laughs> blazoned for me. You know, she said, shame is not a corrective path. Shame is not a corrective path. And, uh, and there's this, you know, beautiful teaching um, of Hiriyotapa, wholesome concern and wholesome, um, you could call it shame, wholesome concern, wholesome shame or remorse but it has a really different meaning than in the way that we sort of feel shamed a lot. And, and it, it's these qualities of the heart are actually described as bright guardians of the world and they're innate, you know, they're innate in our heart. And it's, it's that part of the heart that, you know, when we've misstepped, you know, when we've advertently or inadvertently done some harm and the reverberation that lives in the heart, it, it's, like a, it's like an instructor, it's a teacher. And we're meant to, to feel and listen and understand. And I, I believe turn, turn that energy into um, resolution. We take the lesson from it, we're glad for having learned it, and we resolve next time. Next time something like this happens, I'll know I will remember this experience and I'll know how to navigate that more skillfully. And I think this goes back to Shelley's talk this morning when Shelley was, you know, when, you know, that reverberation in the heart, when we feel this subtle shame for having misstep, you know, we, we, it's unpleasant and we dislike it. And then what happens with that dislike you know, is, is where we can get into problems, right? We can, the mind can proliferate and we can defend and we can spin. So we look better in our own estimation or, you know, all the 
the ways that we can just spiral into self-hatred based on this subtle reverberation in the heart of that's this actual guardian of the world that's intended to guide us. So just to be clear that, that guilt is not a wholesome mind state in the Buddhist tradition. Guilt is not useful in that way. Guilt is when we become solid around, you know, this idea, I'm a bad person having done that thing, you know, and then we can't let go of this heavy coat that we wear around. And, and, and maybe there's part of us that feel that, that that's, we're not deserving of our own forgiveness. We deserve to carry this heavy coat of guilt around. And just to understand that that's, that doesn't serve us. It doesn't serve other people. You know, so, so instead we take the energy, we, we learn and we take the energy to make new resolutions about awareness. So this is really deeply a mindfulness practice moving through the world. So uh, I'm going to use this um, meditation, at least in part, that Ruth King has offered. And Ruth King, um, many of you know from Common Ground, who has offered Mindful of Race trainings, and, and she has founded the Mindful of Race Institute. And, but I find her, her forgiveness practice quite, quite powerful. Um, so a lot of what I'll use is sort of based on what, what she's offered in the past. And with any guided meditation like this, you know, take what's useful and let go of what's not useful. You know, just, just this is in part creative. It's kind of you finding your own way to what's moving in your heart and what's needed and not to force anything. And then I'll leave a little time for questions at the end. So... As I said, you know, we can hold this as a creative practice. You know, we do what makes sense for us using words, using memory, reflection, images, uh, as a way to connect with our experience, as a way to connect with our heart. So that's the, that's the, um, the guide for you to look at what's working, what's not working as we move through this. So I'd like to begin with some self-forgiveness and we can just find ourselves in a comfortable position. And relax into your body. You can close your eyes if you'd like to feel the body more clearly, more deeply. And let the body soften. It's fine to lean back against something that supports a relaxation. And so we're just listening in a caring way, we're feeling the breath. And we're appreciating our practice, we're appreciating our effort, our willingness. So we'll begin with bringing to mind a benefactor in your life. This is someone who has loved you and supported you. Someone who's had your back.
dear friend or a teacher, even a child, can be a benefactor. And just imagine them sitting there right behind you. And you feel their love and their care. And it permeates your entire torso. And then bring to mind another person, a dear one, someone you love. And they're sitting close by to your right. And you're enjoying their presence and the love you feel between the two of you. So we feel the strength and support and love from the benefactor behind us and the love you share with the dear one to your right. And then to your left, or even holding in your arms, you can imagine yourself as a child. Try to get a, a clear picture, a clear feeling of yourself as a child. And all the qualities of a child. And an openness and innocence and vulnerability as that child tries to orient to the world.
and you can offer your kind eyes to this part of you. And let this radiant care fill and surround you. receiving and radiating this care without effort. And throughout this practice, they can stay with you, your benefactor, your dear one and your child self. in a way that feels natural in your imagination, taking your child into your arms if they're not there already, holding them with a natural care and all that's bundled up in that child, all the fears and energy and wounds and joy. And feeling this surrounding care, this radiant care, recall a time when we may have caused harm to ourselves and have difficulty forgiving ourselves. It may even have been something small and simple today. Or maybe it's a recurring theme in some way in your life. And try to be specific. And for any way I have caused harm to myself out of pain or out of confusion, I offer myself forgiveness.
I accept myself as I am. There's no part of myself left out. I allow myself to be imperfect, to make mistakes, to be a learner, still learning life's lessons. I offer forgiveness to myself. And for a few minutes, you can continue in your own way, offering phrases of forgiveness. And knowing if I cannot forgive myself now, may I forgive myself sometime in the future. We release blame for our own freedom And feel free <clears throat> to remain here in this space of self-forgiveness. Or if you'd like, we'll move on to forgiving another for a way in which we've been harmed. And if you'd like to do that, we can begin that still with this triage of support around you. 
and recall a time when we were harmed by someone and may have difficulty forgiving them. And choose a harm that feels workable in this moment. Maybe it was, a, again, a small harm from today. From a friend, a stranger, a family member. And try to be specific. And remembering that this person, too, has had dreams and hurts. And we can offer that person our forgiveness for any way that you have caused harm to me out of pain or confusion. I offer you my forgiveness as best I can. I offer you forgiveness. And if I can't forgive you now, May I be able to forgive you in the future. I allow you to be a learner, still learning life's lessons. As best I can, I forgive you. I release blame for my own freedom. If we're feeling things are too intense or get overwhelming, we can just adjust to our mindfulness practice. Stepping back, noticing what's arising.
And let's end with some simple words of kindness to ourselves. May I be peaceful, may I be safe and protected. May I care for myself joyfully during my life on this earth. We can appreciate this triage that surrounded us supported us. And reflect on the love and care and support we've received through our life. Appreciating this life you've been given just as it is. So take a minute to stretch or do, do what you need to do.
So we have a little a little bit of time if there were questions that came up with you um, about this practice or um, maybe about what I was talking about earlier, this concept of kiriyotapa, wholesome fear and wholesome remorse. Freda really pointed to um, really why why we do this is of course to to let go of the bitterness that in fact harms us so we we move into this practice understanding that this is a way of caring for ourselves yeah thank you is there anything else Um, say something more about wholesome shame is that was that the question okay yeah been such a illuminating practice for me, you know, and, and I'm sure I'm, <laughs> I'm not alone as, you know, walking through the world with a lot of sense of shame and unworthiness, you know, like, like just, and, and maybe, you know, maybe at, at root, there's some idea that there's a nobility in like that idea, you know, like it's, it's as Sharon Salzberg said, like there's some corrective path if we kind of really hold this this shame or that you know that we're not deserving in some some way but it's it's um as we've all experienced that's not it's not wholesome it's not a useful idea and it's a tremendous suffering and and just this pointer for me this this idea that there is this sensitivity of the heart you know profoundly sensitive you know we all we all know this and and the littlest thing can land with with such weight uh, whether it's like a harm from the outside or or something that we did that just just you know there's just a festering regret around and and that beautiful instruction to see it as a guide a little a little star it's a guide that that, whoops, I went too far this way, you know, what lesson can I take from having done that? And, and this whole um, tendency to proliferate and to make a self out of a very poignant feeling is what we need to be aware of and take care not to do. And, and I, I want to repeat the importance of, of Shelley's sort of um, instruction around Vedana because uh, that pain is so powerful, you know, that, that it's not easy to do, to kind of to feel into that reverberation into the heart in a kind of neutral way or in a way that we don't get overwhelmed by it. But that's the instruction. We let it land and we feel it. We know it, we understand. So we're not running from this kind of little agonizing thing that we're carrying around. We don't run from it. We breathe into it. We, we see what, what is to learn here. And then with that, you know, I think it's like that energy can become a resolution in, in a kind of self-protecting way. You know, so instead of letting that energy spin into thoughts that kind of defend ourselves, like, well, you know, I'm not really to blame or, or, you know, whatever it, whatever it may be, we blame someone else, or how the, the million ways we all recognize to sort of avoid feeling that very specific feedback, you know, so we, we learn from it. We don't make a self out of it. You know, this is a corrective, a self-corrective, and we we can feel grateful for it. Mark and I were just listening to the Christmas story and the Scrooge, the you know, uh, on Christmas, and and it was so beautiful. I thought, oh, Charles Dickens must have been just Buddhist, or I, I don't know, it, just as beautiful Christian that he was, but somehow just 
the three spirits of the night that kind of revealed the conditions like how he came to be a Scrooge and what, what are the consequences of him continuing to be Scrooge-like and then showing him this is where it leads, honey. <laughs> and then he wakes up and he's so grateful. He has another chance. <laughs> you know, he, he comes into Christmas, he, he has another chance. So, so to feel like the enlivening quality of, oh, I see, I see. You know, so we can be glad that we've understood something that we didn't understand before, as opposed to the paralyzing quality of guilt, which is a kind of shutdown. And that's when we can know we're in guilt or we're sort of in this place of understanding and permanence and fluidity and, and the nature of our heart. Yeah, and then the other piece of that, so wholesome remorse or shame, it's translated in different ways. And then the other piece of it is, is wholesome fear, where the heart activates, that old reverberation comes up when we're about to do something that may harm us or harm another. So that's considered, you know, the, these two guardians of the world, they're like, they work in tandem, right? They're not completely separable, but it's like a little warning system don't go down that path, you know. So those are the two aspects, Hiri Otapa, H-I-R-I, and then O-T-T-A-P-A, -A, the bright guardians of the world. And I'm, I'm looking at, um, at some of the chat, uh, Spruce, who says, shame is feeling we are bad uh, that goes beyond and behavior that's been unskillful. Renee Brown has fabulous material on shame. And then uh, Fred, I've carried things around in the past that made me shudder every time I thought of them. I don't do it in the same way anymore. Sometimes when those thoughts came back, it was like a self-punishment that had no purpose. Yeah, great. Yeah, bright, bright guardians of the world. And it's Hiri, H-I-R-I. And then the second word is Otapa, O-T-T-A-P-A. It's, um, it's just a skillful mean. So like if it, it's a piece that doesn't make sense, you know, we can, we can let go. But I think the, the purpose of bringing our child self in is that it may be easier for us to evoke that sense of, um, of care and forgiveness toward a child. Like, you know, when we, when we see ourselves, you know, as someone young and bewildered and, you know, we can, we can, from that distance, have compassion, and that can sort of begin there, and then move toward us in the present moment. So that, that's sort of the, the reason that it, it's a, it can be an easy, easier way in. And thank you too, Megan. I, I really appreciate this point about humility. Um, um, yeah, yeah, Mark and I were just talking about the root word of humility, you know, yeah, humus, kind of earth, like down to earth. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that deep, Wow, that deep surrender of kind of our egoic selves, you know, and it's that egoic self that really, um, yeah, makes it hard when, when we kind of find we've created harm, you know, it's like we don't want to be that person, you know, that created harm, and so it flies in our, you know, flies in our face. We're all there, Jeannie, in our own in our own way about this, and I, and I think the key, you know, the key to remember is like um, that forgiving or sort of not uh, kind of caving into reactivity does not um, mean that we are not. Um, 
in any condition, we can still be discerning and we can act with wisdom, right? We can shout, but we can be untroubled in our heart. You know what I mean? Like, so in the space of like seeing someone with a mask or without a mask who is about to endanger someone, we recognize this happening. There, there is a reasonable <laughs> flare that will happen in the heart. I mean, I, I think that, that that's natural, you know, but, you know, we're talking about we're talking about the kind of proliferation that we hold to ideas and that we suffer because of it. So that's the thing. We, we want to be attuned to the ways we create our own suffering. Like if by seeing all these mass people, we are slowly becoming brittle and filled with anger, then we're not serving anybody, you know, but when the heart is clearer, we're more clear about what's a, what's a useful action, right? You know, it doesn't, we don't have to be angry to act. And I think that's just the discernment we need to make all the time. Like, like what's the kind of mind I want to respond to? And, and we, all know how, we all know what it feels like to be um, attacked by someone who is angry at us or who hates us they might be saying something absolutely clear and absolutely justified and right, but all we'll hear is the anger and the hatred. And we're right to feel suspicious of that. We're right to feel that that's not right, you know? So I think it's, it's not easy, simple territory at all, but just, just to, just to know that, you know, that the, the listening has to be to how we're suffering or not suffering ourselves mm. with all that's been in the heart. Yeah. Thank there's you. so much, yeah, there's so much more to say around that. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad you asked that question. This is what Carol Ann just wrote, you know, forgiving someone doesn't mean that what they did was okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, doesn't mean that we, condone in any sense that's not what this practice is about yeah just reading the chats here yeah. this is megan i think there is ignorance perhaps if they were there when these patients suffered and died pronounce them dead talk oh yeah going back to the mask issue yeah they would understand yeah absolutely right it's what we see, and what we perceive and don't see and don't perceive. Okay, well, thank you, Mamie, and everyone for your questions and sharings today, and we'll see you at seven. <laughs>